This year, our teacher introduced us to the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest, which challenges us to use STEAM to help address an issue in our community. Students with autism often struggle to interact and socialize with others. This impacts their ability to learn in the classroom. Our challenge is to create an environment in which students with autism can practice social interaction. We're using design thinking to solve this challenge. An important part of our journey here is understanding the day-to-day -day lives of students with autism. So that we can use that awareness to create more effective tools. My name is Emma. I have autism. Sometimes I have problems with my friends. My name is Eric and I have autism. It's hard for me to talk to people. We have learned that autism now affects one out of 68 children and that the prevalence in our community continues to grow. And autism is one of the fastest growing developmental disorders in the U.S. This inspires us to collaborate with students and other professionals using a design thinking process. Imagine learning in a space where failure is encouraged. Where wild ideas flourish. And where understanding your client is critical. Through collaborative efforts with our peers, we develop different variations of a prototype that helps us accommodate different learning styles. Our 2D teams are creating social stories that are designed to look like storyboard comics. We developed 3D models and environments to create animations. And our tech teams are using 3D models to create virtual reality experiences based on storyboards and 3D animations. This is by no means an easy task. It requires us to work through multiple iterations of the design thinking process to reflect and refine our solution. We're also reaching out to students with ASD and their parents as well as experts to get feedback on our designs. Using visuals um, is something we do a lot as professionals working with uh, students with autism. This part of the design thinking process enables us to implement feedback into our revisions and ideate even better solutions. As we're working through this project, we discover what kind of an impact we can make on this community, and that with more help, we can create an even bigger difference. This project has led us to form a partnership with a local tech company, Yeti CGI, to mentor us through the process and the challenges that we will face throughout it. As we continue through our journey, we are discovering that there are even greater needs in our community for a solution like our idea proposes. Here, we can use our passion for 3D animation and game design to help make a difference in our community, but we need your help to keep our vision moving forward. Can you? Can you? Can you? Help us. Solve for tomorrow. Welcome back to Autism Live and Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy joining us right now from Grand Rapids, Michigan and the Kent Career Tech Center. We've got Mark Petz, who is an amazing educator who helped, I mean, you just, how impressive was just program. the video, yeah. right? Uh, and Mark has uh, an extensive uh, knowledge in 3D animation and game design and after 14 years of working in the railroad in IT decided to go into the classroom and be an educator yes. of excellence. Yes. I'll, I'll have you correct me in just a second. And joining with him we've got Mary Musto who has teaching endorsements in so many different areas including learning disabilities, autism, emotional impairments, K through six all subjects, gifted and talented special education and also McGuire Meyer Vanderwall, who is a recent high school graduate, graduate from the 3D, 3D, I can't even talk anymore, I'm so excited, 3D animation and game <laughs> design program at the Kent Tech Center. Uh, so, okay, I don't even know where to start except to say welcome and we're excited to have you guys with us. Yeah, thank you for yeah. having us on. This is fantastic. Tell us about the, the Kent Tech Center. What is that career tech center? What is that all about? The Kent Career Tech Center is a, um, a school where um, there's different school districts or schools within the, the county that, that send their juniors and seniors to this center to learn um, job skills training, get them prepared for the workforce, or um, and many of them uh, get some college education and will then go on to college. So there's a lot of like job skill training, the skilled, skilled trades that, that um, get taught here. Okay. And so you have created what is called what you're calling your 3D Autism app. Um, and what is the goal of that program, that creation? The the goal is really to create a an environment where 
um, the user, it, whether it is a person with autism or somebody who wants to understand autism uh, better, to practice in an environment that will help improve those social communication skills. And how many students did you have working on this, Mark? I had 40 students working on it this year. That's pretty amazing. And McGuire, you were working on this program, is that correct? I was, yep. Yeah. And how exciting was it for you guys? I understand that you were a top 10 national finalist and got to New York, go to New York City to pitch your idea to Samsung? Uh, yeah, we were, part, we were part of the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest, which is a nationwide contest for, uh, that allows classes to come up with ideas to help solve problems in their communities. And we were able to, through this project, work on something we believed could help a lot of people and Claire Samsung agreed because we were able to get to the top 10 nationwide ranking there. Well, that's fantastic. Congratulations on that. You're really hitting it on all pistons. I mean, uh, Mary, maybe you can talk about what this is, this kind of an experience for students working on this kind of a project, which not only has real world applications for it, but it's exciting for them. It's got to be so much more exciting than just cracking a book, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, what was amazing was to experience and listen to Mark's students, you know, as they learned about autism and to use their skills, their technical skills, to create a product that could help, you know, others, you know, with disabilities and. A side effect was is that we hope that these students who worked on this project, when they are at a, employment or when they go to do university work, that they will then be able to assist those with disabilities because they've learned more about it and they feel more comfortable doing that. So it's not only instructive, it, instructional for the child with autism or the young, young person with autism, it's also for those, the peers, to learn more about autism. Absolutely, in both gain. We see individuals with autism as amazing. And the, really, the reason why we even went into this endeavor is because we, we were looking at the statistics and these amazing people with, who do have autism, you know, the percentage of them being employed and working in jobs that are very satisfying is extremely low. It's the lowest of all the disabilities. So we thought you have these amazing people who can think in pictures who who can who belong in the IT industry, but because of some social communication deficits are just not allowed or they're blocked somehow. In training at a place even like KCTC or going on to university work. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you uh, have you worked on this with 40 students, but most of them graduated. But this is not the end, correct? That's right. So um, the just to kind of step back just a little bit, uh, the students that I worked with this year, with the 40 of them, they came into the program with no prior 3D knowledge. And so for six months of the year, we worked on the skills that they needed in order to work on a project like this and get it to a, um, to a state where we can start to, to demo it. Um, and so now you know, when we came to the end, the students are all graduated. But the, the nice thing is that uh, the, the, Kent Career, or the Kent Career Tech Center and the Kent Intermediate School District they, they fully support what we're trying to do here. We're, we're, this is really uh, feeds into what they, they believe is leading learning. So um, we're, we have five students that we were able to um, hire for over the summertime and, and continue to develop this uh, and get it further along so that way you know, we can get it into classrooms and into the hands of those that really want to use something like this. And how far away are you from that? When when will this? When do you think this app will come to market so that people can use it? Uh, so our goal is by the end of the summer to have a testable demo that's going to be used in just um, some select schools uh, around here, and then based on that feedback and the, the data, uh, that will help guide us to re, you know to revise uh, our our product. And then our hope would be you know within I would say this time next year that we'd have something that we could certainly a release to all of the, the public. And what is your long-term vision for the for the project? The, the long-term vision is is uh, is to create some type of um, just an access like a service or, or something that the, the, the um, school district can offer to the stakeholders uh, a way to practice whether it's in the classrooms or to local businesses 
and then eventually uh, go on a broader scale, like a nationwide or even across the globe. Um, so something that's going to be easy, easy to ex to um, access and something that's easy to use and it's effective. Remarkable. McGuire, what are your plans now that you, gr you graduated? What are your plans now? Uh, well, I'm actually one of the five students selected by the district to, uh, to help continue this project during the summer. So hopefully my, my main goal right now is to be able to uh, finish up that demo that we're set to finish by the end of the summer so that we can keep working on this project throughout the school year. Great. Remarkable. And you, you've already brought in some money for this because you guys won $50,000. Talk about what, yes. what that enabled you to do. So the, the prize for um, making it so far in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest was $50,000 in Samsung technology. And what that means is that they, they provided us a list of technology that we could select based on the needs of the school and and the needs of what our project, you know, requires to, to get this out to, you know, to the public. So uh, we we selected um, fifty thousand dollars worth of technology, and, and it's actually on its way uh, to the school here, or it should be here sometime over the summertime. That's got to feel good. You, I, I'm guessing that you're a hero in your hometown, Mark. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I, I I don't look at that that way. I'm just this is just something that I really enjoy doing, and I'm having a fun time doing it. And, and uh, we're we're just making a difference, and that's really what what matters. And and uh, so if somebody wants to view me as a hometown hero, that's that's uh you know thank I'm thankful for that. I, I think you need a sash. At well, least. we're very excited to see where this app goes, and we're going to be staying in touch. Will you let us know once things progress? Oh, we absolutely will. Um, we we certainly feel that this is this is uh, something that we want to share to the world, and we're certainly not going to keep it secret. Okay, great. And is there anything yeah. right now that the community can do to help support you? Uh, so, a project like this uh, obviously requires money. So, uh, we we don't really know how we we can um, structure a way for us to get money yet, but we're working on that. Uh, so, funding really is our big or is our largest obstacle at this point uh, to to get this to a product that can be used by the public so so how do they reach you how do they reach you if they're interested in helping with funding they can um, go to the um, the, the techcenter.org and you could reach out to um, to the administration through that website uh, I would say um, reach out to the one of the administrators and just uh, express interest in being able to donate to this project. And I have one more question. So this is an app. Um, so is this a, an app that you would use one of those set of VR goggles and put your phone inside the goggles? Or are you thinking of this more as something to use on like, for instance, an Oculus Rift? Uh, so we we feel like the, the, the most um, accessible way of delivering this would be mobile. Although the, the Oculus Rift, they're, they're very, nice and they have a lot of um, bells and whistles but our goal is really to get it um, mobile and so it would use like the oculus go goggles or the samsung um, gear vr and of course technology is changing we have ideas of how we can um, you know evolve our idea to something that's even more accessible and utilizes mobile technology on a grander scale so uh for now it's it's um it's the portable uh, vr goggles all right uh Fascinating. All right, well, we'll oh, be staying so cool. tuned and can't wait to hear about the new developments, and we wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you.